keep it going. Let's get the energy up. Let's get it yeah. Yeah. Coming to the stage, Mr. Christopher Anthony. Yeah. Yeah. I like how we're all gathering in secret at the back of a restaurant, like we're plotting overthrowing the government. It's beautiful support group for people who still want to have a sense of humor in a post-COVID world. It's beautiful. Um, you guys, I struggle a little bit because I, I take things way too literally. Like I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys here like got here with Uber. I can't get over the fact that you're just like getting into a vehicle with a complete stranger. And the only thing that gives you any sense of confidence is because like you're paying them for it. Like so many times there's comics and I can see that they're like on Uber or Lyft. And I'm like, do you want me to just give you a ride home? And they're like, uh, no, it's fine. I'll just take an Uber. I'm like, look, I'll tell you what. You sit in the back and I'll charge you $22. Just to <laughs> you with every night. Because obviously getting something for free is really awkward for you. So sex must be traumatic. Absolutely. <laughs> Every time someone jumps into a car in Uber, I'm like, don't get in the car, you don't even know them! You know, it's so weird. And then you think of the demographic of people who drive for Uber and Lyft, and it's all the people who like, obviously don't like the idea of having coworkers, Ooh. don't like the idea of having a boss, right? It's just like, I love the hours. Like, okay, well, well what do you work like? Eight to five, nine to six? No, like, my hours start from like, when my grandma goes to sleep, and then I usually work until a lot of my friends jump on Call of Duty. How long is that? I don't really know. That's the shift that I work. I, because I take things literal, it also makes it really hard for me to enjoy football. Are we like football fans here? Hey, Saints fans. Okay, all right. Yeah, you're, you're required by law, by the way, to be a Saints fan. They won't renew your license unless you show up to the DMV wearing a Saints jersey. They're like, fuck it, I'm not taking the picture. You from Atlanta? Anyway. But it makes it really difficult for me. Like, I can't watch a football game because I can't get over the semantics of it. It's like, okay, so like, a bunch of dudes get together and they wear matching outfits of a three-color scheme. But if they go to a state that also has that three-color scheme, they have to wear something different because they can't be like prom. No, 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 that's gonna work. <laughs> right? And then there's like the different positions, like penetrating deep into a tight end, chasing down a wide receiver, posting up hard against a fullback. <laughs> and then where do these guys go to get their supplies? They go to a huge store called Dick's. Dick's is huge, absolutely. They need Dick's. Uh, and then the whole, the whole sports program is brought to you by Cox. They have to tell you that before every commercial. Cox is bringing this to you, into your home. Penetrating deep. Um, super great. It also sounds like cosplay. It's like, I'm going to dress up as a Viking, but I want you to dress up as a cowboy. <laughs> and we're just gonna get down nice and low. We wear pads to prevent bleeding. My sister does it, it's gonna work, okay. <laughs> and I'm gonna push up against you, and you're gonna push up against me, but don't worry, we're wearing protection. We're all wearing protection, right? Okay, cool. Now, I want you to come at me really hard, but not until the guy in the Foot Locker t-shirt tells us to, he's gonna blow, and then that's when you come out. <laughs> Also, if you take it literal, it also sounds like the worst episode of Animal Planet. Like, some of these seem fair, like the Cardinals, Eagles, Seahawks, that seems like a fair match, right? But Bears versus Dolphins, now you realize why they haven't won since the 70s. I mean, the Dolphins just don't stand a chance, to be honest. Now, and then if that isn't heterosexual enough, men, they enjoy football in the privacy of their home uh, with a thing called Fantasy football. <laughs> fantasy. Uh, but the only way you can enjoy fantasy football is if you know the men very intimately. Um, how tall is he? How much does he weigh? What schools did he go to? What's his favorite position? Like, he tried a few things in college. He experimented a bit, but what did he, what did he really settle down on? <laughs> And it's like, I'm following him. Like, for all intents and purposes, fantasy football fans are stalkers. <laughs> You're wearing his shirt. And he doesn't know you. And if he lose, you lose. Because you put $400 on this guy. 
Boxing, I also have a hard time with boxing. People are like, oh, it's a super hetero sport. And I'm just like, again, my literal brain, I'm like, okay, so these two guys who are completely obsessed with their weight, let's be honest. <laughs> Come on. Why do we have to watch you step on a scale? My sister made me do that all the time. Anyway, so they're fighting over what? Do you guys know about boxing? They're fighting over a purse and a belt. The belt doesn't even match their outfit. So that just seems odd off the bat. They get together and they're brought together with a ring, okay? They come out in this beautiful satin robe, which does match their shorts, but they take it off immediately. They're standing there in their underwear, wearing tall leather boots and gloves. We bring back the pads to reduce the bleeding again. There's no problem. again. Now, when these men can't work out their differences, like civilized people, they go and they hug in a corner for a very long period of time until this other man, who obviously doesn't understand what they're working through, comes in and separates them. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's also really difficult for me as a literal communicator to like date. Like I was on a date and this girl was like, I don't understand this whole obsession with body count. And I don't understand the phrasing, so I just took it to heart. And I was just like, look, you're pretty, you're fun, you're ambitious. I don't care how many men you've killed. Like, <laughs> this is New Orleans. It was obviously in self-defense. I'm just, I'm a feminist. I'm believing in you. Absolutely. But obviously she was talking about this whole thing about previous lovers. And like, fellas, look, helpful word of advice. If you want to have a conversation about previous lovers, the best thing you can do is to initiate that conversation. It worked for me. I was like, look, baby, let's both talk about how many men we've been with. I'll start. Zero. I know, I know, I never experimented. It's because I never got into football. Anyway, um, you, what's your, where are you going? What, what's going on? Okay. That's me imagining the girl, maybe. Spoiler alert. There's also this whole thing of ghosting. Do you guys know what ghosting is? You go out to eat, they choke on their food, they die in front of you, haunt you for the rest of your life. No, just me? Just us. Okay. I'm gonna keep looking in different directions, do you guys understand the jokes? All right. But ghosting has become so common. This is New Orleans, this is a haunted city. But now when people ask me, do you believe in ghosts? My response is, no, I'm sure she's busy with work. You know what I mean? Like, she has a dog, I'm sure she'll get back to me. I do want to come up with a show called Ghost Hunters. We don't look for supernatural beings. We just go to local bars trying to find out why Stacy hasn't called John back in four days. <laughs> and we expose the ghost uh, by opening the text messaging app to show that she read the fucking message. <laughs> Where are my iPhone people at? iPhone people? Yeah. There's like a little three floating dots whenever somebody's I, like looking to text you, right? When you're hung up on someone, that shit feels like a seance, right? It's like, I felt like you were trying to communicate with me, and I was just so receptive. I was ready, and it's just, hello? Uh, ladies, uh, straight ladies, sorry. Um, no, no, this doesn't make sense for the regular ones, unless, of course, it depends on the dildos. Anyway, um, and by dildos, I mean ex-boyfriends that obviously converted you. Anyway, uh, public service announcement. Uh, during sex, uh, all the gentlemen, we all got together, and we just thought maybe we could ask you if you could stop doing that thing during sex where you're like, deeper, deeper. Um, it's a dick. It's not like the Star Wars franchise, you know what I mean? It's not like, did you think you saw all the dick? We have new episodes of Dick coming out every week. Like, Did you want more Dick? Well, hold on, I'm gonna open this night stand because I just like you have at home. I have extra Dick over here. I would never have sex with a girl and be like shallower, shallower. I want to hit a wall. Does it ever end? How many kids have you had? Do you even talk to them? I would never do that because it's rude. You know. <laughs> And my therapist tells me that when you say deeper, what I hear is, I'm not enough, I'm not enough. Um, 
also just be careful. Like, young people, old people, like, everybody wants to get a little bit more experimented in the bedroom, you know? But just be careful because what you say might not be what they hear. Uh, so I'm laying in bed with my lady. My lady, in case anybody's still confused. Uh, I'm not gay, I'm from Miami, we all dress like this. Anyway, <laughs> So I'm laying there, and she whispers to me, first of all, why are you whispering? Am I on camera? What's going on here? She whispers, she says, I want you to make me feel violated. So I did, you guys all hear that? Okay, good. That's gonna be important. So I did what I thought any man would do in that situation, okay? I tie her hands to the headboard. I tie her feet to the footboard. Yes, I do have a full bedroom, it's beautiful. Anyway. <laughs> Hands to the headboard, feet to the footboard, put a gag in her mouth, and then I looked through her cell phone. Oh, oh. <laughs> and she was all like, <laughs> I apparently took the mouth gag out, disgusted, and she was into some Fifty Shades of Grey kind of shit. And I didn't know that until I saw her text messages with Greg. <laughs> so just be careful, because what you say isn't what we hear. You guys have been great. Thank you so much. Uh -huh.